Oh hey guys, it's Steven here and welcome back to another China phone dismantling video and today we're going to have a look at the Elephone P8000. Now this one here is from efogshop.com, as always there's a link down below in the description if you want to check it out. Okay, so why do we take it apart? Now I want to show you how to replace the battery because the battery is not removable, at least without tools. And also I'm not really sure if there's an LED in the home button. In some videos um, you can see that um, the home button actually acts as a notification LED, but with the stock ROM I have on my Elephone, um, it's somehow not working. So I just want to check out the hardware if there's really an LED under the home button and how it looks from the inside and everything. Okay, then I would say let's get directly started, let's take it apart and let's have some fun. Alright guys, so first of all we have to remove the back cover and you can easily remove it with your finger. Here at the bottom there's a little slot to go in and lift it off and it's really tight and there we go here comes the back cover and the pattern looks really nice just like the carbon pattern of the EQ E04 um, yeah some curved back cover just a piece of plastic nothing special in here no antennas no wireless charging or whatever and then here you can see the phone from the inside. If you want to have a closer look at the phone and all the internals, um, yeah, those internals you can see here, then um, make sure you check out my unboxing video which I uploaded today, um, so we had a look at everything here. Okay, um, then I would say let's get directly started and let's remove all the screws so we can just lift off the plastic frame and then we can see how it looks from the inside. Now first of all, really important, if you open it up then you will void your warranty. But we know Chinese warranty, so if something breaks down you probably have to send it back, pay for replacement parts, it takes forever, so I usually fix some problems on my own and just buy the replacement parts from China. Okay, now to unscrew the screws, um, I'm using this Philips flat hat and it's a very small one, actually we have here cross tip screws, but it's okay with that one here too. So we have here around 10 screws screws all along the frame and I will now just unscrew all of them and remove them and yeah um, then we should be able to lift off that white plastic frame here. Alright ladies and gentlemen I have now unscrewed and removed all the screws all along the frame and here was another hidden screw actually under the fingerprint scanner and the fingerprint scanner so the module is um, glued here to that plastic frame. When you have removed all the screws you can just lift off that plastic frame here Let's quickly check it out. And basically um, here you can see the golden pads for the antenna contact. So basically there are some contacts on the mainboard and those contacts are touching here the um, golden pads and then we have the antenna loop on the other side. Um, here the camera lens, so the plastic lens cap and here we have the LED flash cover and well so far this is looking good. Here's the speaker. Speaker is looking very small here are the two golden contacts which are touching the corresponding points on the bottom PCB and here's another antenna. Alright, so we have a little dust seal right over here and that's basically it. Now let's have a look at the rest here and let me zoom in a little bit. Alright, so there we go. Now before we remove the battery, let's have a closer look at the mainboard and the upper parts here. So here we have the SIM card slots, SIM card slot 1, SIM card slot 2 and the micro SD card slot. So far it's looking good, the placement and everything. Then here you can see the battery and the um, battery flex cable. So basically to um, just change the battery you have to lift off that um, flex cable connector and then you can just get out the battery with a credit card or whatever because there's some glue under the battery you have to be a bit careful and then you can just reinsert the new battery with some tape then you just connect it to the mainboard and there you go. So it's not that easy but um, you can definitely do it on your own. Okay, so here's the fingerprint scanner. Um, I will later have a look at the number on the flex cable. Then it's connected here to the main board with that flex cable. And here we have um, some more of them. And one of them goes down to the bottom PCB, I guess. And the other one goes to the display. Alright, so um, you can see here several contacts. So they are actually the contacts for the antenna loop in the back cover, as you've seen before. And um, here we have some test points, then here we have the camera module, so the big one, the rear camera. And here the LED flash, I mean it looks kind of crappy, but I'm not sure about the performance. You will see it in my full review of that smartphone. 3.5mm headphone check, then you see here um, the volume rockers and also the power button, so basically it's connected with that flex cable here to the board. 
and that's pretty good because um, if you want to change them you don't have to desolder the buttons that's a really good solution which you do not have on every China phone alright then um, here's the um, antenna connector for the bottom PCB probably that's GSM antenna or whatever and yeah um, that's the upper mainboard here nothing so fancy so far but let's just now remove the battery and then let's have a look at the rest now here comes the battery of the Elephone P8000 and this battery is really massive rated capacity 4000 milliamp hours typical capacity 4165 we can see here the flex cable connector so you can easily replace it and you see it's really thick it's heavy and it's huge here basically the double sided tape and this is just to stick it down to the frame and when you want to remove it just use a credit card or whatever to go under the battery and then just gently lift it off. So the battery seems to be really really good so the advertised capacity which is a good thing and also um, I talked with other people like Styler and he said two days battery lifetime no problem at all and he's a an heavy Android user so so far this is looking really really good. Okay that's regarding the battery and now let's continue. Now here's just a quick look at the frame of the P8000 with everything still attached and just check this out. It's not only an outer metal frame which goes around the phone to make it look good, it's a whole metal chassis and it makes the phone heavier, yes, around 20 grams heavier than the P7000, but the stability is so much better. Also the whole build quality, now this is really really good. You see it's also painted here in golden and so not only the outer border, so this is looking very good and I will later show you the P7000 again and then you can see the difference. But well, um, let's just continue. I will now remove the bottom PCB, the top mainboard and then we can check everything out here. And here comes the bottom PCB of the Elephone P8000. So we can see here the micro USB port, then that little thing here that's the bottom microphone, soldering points for the vibration motor which you can see right over here so it's at the bottom of the phone. Then, well, um, let's turn it around, so here just one number and um, another point for grounding or probably for some antenna loop. Okay, um, here's some more of them and here you can see the antenna connector, so for the antenna cable which goes down from the top mainboard. Here um, the revision number, so version 2.02 .02, if I can read this correctly. Uh, well, that's basically it, so here we have the flex cable which goes all the way um, up to the top mainboard and basically connects the bottom PCB with the top mainboard. Alright, then let's have a look at something else. And here you can see the bottom side of the mainboard. Basically here the IF shields and under those um, metal shields you will find the chipset. I'm not going to open them up right now because we'll just see some chips with the MTK branding. It's absolutely nothing special, but I can really confirm that this phone here is running the MTK6753 chipset, so no worries. We can see here the camera module and um, the rear camera module and the front facing camera both are made by Sunwin and I don't have any Sunwin data sheet, so I cannot tell you so much about it. And also it's really hard to find this on Google. So um, we have to trust Elephone for now, but I will definitely check it out in the firmware too. Okay, so that was the front side, and let's just um, flip it over, and here you can see the front facing camera. And it's also made by Sunwin, at least the flex cable um, says that. And yeah, so that's the mainboard, really small, it's at the top of the phone, and so far the mainboard and everything, it's looking good, just the LED flash here, I think it looks kind of crappy. So guys, here's the frame without the mainboard and the bottom PCB, and you see it's a really metal chassis, and this gives the phone some really nice stability, it makes the phone really heavy, but um, I think it's okay, because the build quality is really good. Now regarding the notification LED, um, which should actually be inside of the home button or around the home button or whatever, there is no LED. There is no LED on the bottom PCB, there is no LED in here, there's just the micro USB port, so there's a cutout for the USB port, and that's it. So there's really no notification LED, which I think is kind of sad, because I like the feature on the Elephone P7000 where the home button could light up. But here, nope. There is absolutely no backlight on the capacitive touch buttons and you have to deal with that. 
I mean, um, I've seen some prototypes and the home button did light up. I'm not really sure why they changed it, because that's a great feature. But I can definitely confirm on my final version here. There's absolutely no LED here at the bottom, no notification LED, and that's kind of sad, but um, you have to deal with that. Okay, then let's have a closer look here at the top. Here at the top we have the LCD IC, as you can see, and here the cable, so basically if you want to replace the display, you would have to separate now the metal frame and the display and digitizer. And this is a bit of a pain in the ass because you have to heat it up, you have to be really careful, but it's possible. Here you can see um, the top speaker and yeah, um, it doesn't look too bad, so I've seen speakers which are way smaller, so this looks actually okay. Then here the cover for light and proximity sensor and here the plastic cap lens of the front-facing camera. So, so far I really like the build quality of that phone and also when I had it in my hands for the first time I, it was just like wow, no gaps, it's heavy, it feels like a good phone and also if I have a look now at the frame from the inside, this looks just great. Now this is quite interesting, so even the fingerprint scanner is made by Sunwin. So the rear camera module, the front facing camera module, and even here, um, yeah, the fingerprint scanner is made by Sunwin. Unfortunately, I don't have any data sheets from them, but maybe I can get some and then link you the data sheets or whatever down below in the description. But um, let's just see, because I'm really curious on what sensors they're using in their camera modules. But um, we can also check that out in the firmware during the review. But so far, um, this is looking quite okay. Oh yeah guys, we're now here at the end of this dismantling video and I can now confirm that the battery capacity is real, the battery is massive and you can replace it, it's actually really easy. And yeah, you see it looks like a normal lithium-ion battery pack. Here we have the cover, so actually nothing special. Then um, there is no notification LED inside or under the home button, so this is definitely not working. And I've seen prototypes with that, I'm not sure why they changed it, because it's a great feature, but I can tell you in the final version it does not light up. Alright, so the rest, the build quality, um, for instance the chassis, it's looking great and it feels good but the phone is very heavy with a bit over 200 grams. You just have to keep that in mind. But the build quality is way, way better than on the Elephone P7000 which I will just show you now for a second. So just a very quick look at the Elephone P7000 I have here from the first batch. And um, you see that the display comes off of the frame. This cannot happen here on this one. Actually, yes, it can because it's glued to the frame probably. But um, the quality, it seems to be way better than the P7000 because this happened. Actually, it came like this. So here's a gap and you can really um, easily bend the phone. So we don't have a metal chassis, we just have a very thin metal frame around the phone and I can bend it now with the cover, just check this out. This phone really bends a lot and I think, yeah, the phone is crap. So the Elephone P7000 was really a phone I wouldn't buy at all, but the Elephone P8000 looks very promising. So um, now just please wait for my full review. I definitely have to check out some things like performance, camera, GPS, blah, blah, blah. But you will see that at the end of this week because I'm attending the Gamescom in Köln, Germany and I'm now gone for four days. So I will do some videos with um, Tim from Nerdbench. It will be a lot of fun but I cannot do any smartphone reviews and unboxings. Maybe we can do a quick talk or something like that. That would be cool but please stay tuned for my full review. Okay guys, then thank you so much for watching. Have a nice day and bye bye. See ya!